Welcome to the Tradies in Business podcast with your hosts, Warwick Bidwell and Nicole Cox. Divert your phone and grab a brew as Waz and Nick unpack tips, tales, secrets and stuff-ups from guests both inside and outside your trade, helping educate and inspire you to break the cycle of gut-busting and money stress and create a true trade business. Howdy, howdy. We're back. <laughs> We're back. <laughs> A few people are like, uh-oh, they're back. Yeah, well, I've had quite a few people ask me this week, where we are, are we coming back, what are we doing, what's happening? Yeah, okay. And uh, I think most people probably know to leave me alone at the moment. <laughs> so I think you might Why? Because you're them. a big prickly bear? <laughs> no, because I'm a delicate snowflake, Coxie. You're not, can, is this a Friday episode? Can we just put it right out there? This is going to get a bit sweary and ranty. I think we probably will. I haven't had a good swear for a couple of weeks. On the I've podcast or just in general? Just in general. <laughs> I haven't gone through that. the anger phase. Oh, I Which understand. I'm not very far into the, the four stages of grief, Coxie. No, this is going to be, um, um, I should just buckle the F up and sit back and get ready. Yeah, yeah. Good night. Strap yourself in. Um, so, listeners, we have taken some time from the podcast, as we alluded to, uh, I think on uh, Monday or whenever it was earlier in the week. Some time and, ago. Um, a couple of weeks ago, my, my father passed away and uh, I've been taking some time out to process that. It has been far from a straightforward um relationship it was very much far from a straightforward passing uh of my dad and um the grief process certainly hasn't been straightforward in a covid world where i can't travel uh to actually um support my mother who is very much on her own both of her sons are interstate and unable to get to her so it's been a tricky couple of weeks goxie uh but that's the context listeners so uh, thanks to everybody who sent me messages and um, thank you to my co-host here for, hold- well, not just holding the fort, you've actually been crushing it, Coxie. I don't know about that. Crushing my... Pineapples? Throat. <laughs> yep. I've had, I, I've thrown a few pineapples this week. Sorry to everyone, I threw a pineapple out. I may have inserted them quite firmly a couple of times. Sorry about that. But, you know, so, uh, a pineapple from time to time. But we recorded a great interview today, which which uh, will go up on the podcast soon. And I actually took some notes down about this, about emotions being weakness. And that was a big paradigm in my family, across all of my uncles and, and certainly my father, that uh, emotions were a sign of weakness, particularly for men. Actually, they're a sign of weakness for everybody. We were chatting about this before we hit record, weren't we, Coxie? Mm. Mm. Yeah, very much so. I think, uh, well, you asked me what, what, what stigma, what bullshit let's call it what it is is around emotions for women and i said well there were two things basically women only have emotions around their menstrual cycle which is bullshit and secondly that we have emotions that makes us somehow weaker we're the weaker sex that's the a weakness in our floor again bullshit and to loop back to where i know you're about to go um i grew up with a great dad who encouraged my brother's feelings but the rest of society labeled him as weaker because he was able to express the way he's feeling it's bullshit feelings don't make you weak they make you strong yeah and holding them in actually weakens you because they just wear you down and weigh you down they weigh me down uh (laughs) (laughs) if i take ownership of that so you can imagine what the last uh 10 days or so has been like for me but uh it's been interesting to process all of that um, and then start to talk to people where I'm acutely aware of um, those phrases coming up in conversation with people. And I've had quite a number of men reach out to me um, in the past couple of weeks, almost wanting to share in my processing because it's been helpful for them to get them out there, get some things out on the table. You know, I got a beautiful message from a guy um, that I used to associate with in business. You know, I don't really know him that well personally. Um, and uh, he he saw a little video that I shared on my personal social media profiles 
Um, and he actually rang me to say that he found himself um, tearing up uh, just listening to my little three-minute video because it got him thinking about how he'd done that in his life, you know? And it's like, I think there's so many people who are trying to repress or suppress or or pretend that those emotions aren't there for them. And it's really destructive and you should fucking stop doing it. Those sneaky little <laughs> bastards find a way out whether you like it or not. <laughs> so do you want it to come out in an expression of what it is that you're feeling or perhaps a tear or perhaps um, yes. an explosion of anger or do you want it to come out in heart disease or cancer or all of those other horrible things that can happen to you when you're not um, recognising the internal stuff that is going on for you? There's a real choice. The little bastards get out one way or another. You can go with it and embrace it and be um, present in the journey of those feelings or you can pretend they're not there and ignore them and they'll tear you apart one way or another. You, you mm. can't fight it. Yeah, and it's it's inevitable, isn't it? It's uh, it's going to happen. Unfortunately. Um, and the cool thing is, though, we actually can choose how that takes place. So humans are emotional creatures. Mm. And this, this bullshit idea, particularly for blokes, that we can essentially be emotionless is such a crock of shit. I don't know where it's come from, but it's, it's, it's bullshit. And, uh, I guess I'm just throwing it out there to you listeners. Um, just to take stock of where you're at with it, with your feelings. Um, yeah, there's a lot of campaigns around this stuff. Uh, and as I say repeatedly, I don't think we can talk about it too much. Uh, that it's actually more healthy to feel those feelings and acknowledge them when you have them rather than bottle them all up and either let them destroy you, weigh you down, come out in a, in a catastrophic explosion when you don't want them to or with someone that doesn't deserve them. Uh, and, you know, we talked to a number of guests and a, and a lot of our members about actually you know, pushing back on the people that cause us uh, or that, that bring, um, I don't know, disagreement to our lives. You know, a customer who's overly demanding is actually say, look, I'm really sorry, but I don't appreciate the way you're speaking to me. That's much easier than just bottling that up and then roaring at your missus when you get home at the end of the week because everyone's been giving you the shits, but you didn't say anything to them and you take it out on the person who least deserves it. Can we explore that? I, this is really interesting. It's something I've only learnt in the last um, probably five years of my parenting journey. I have one child who I'm confident won't listen to this episode, but one day I'm going to play it for him, who uh, constantly will take his shit out on his mother. Um, and you know why? It's only been the last five years. I've realised it's because I'm his safe space because he knows that he can push against me or be cranky or express his feelings in an angry way. He might not actually be sharing his feelings, but he can vent in one form or another because this is safe here. I will still be mum. I will still love him. I won't judge him for what he's done as cranky as it might make me. Um, and I wonder how many tradies have a safe space that they're using without realising that they're using it. It, it, mm -hmm. I see it often in the conversations we have in our groups. I can see when there is a safe space in a marriage and uh, the wife or the husband are perhaps copying a lot of feelings that aren't appropriately uh, assigned to them because the person delivering the feelings is unable to express what it is that they are feeling. They, they haven't quite found that way yet. So if you are that safe person, maybe we need to have bigger conversations, you know. From my parenting example, when my son, you know, this week's a, a, an absolute classic in his life. I don't know what's going on for him, but something big is going on. He can't talk to me. And so he snaps at me. He's cranky with me. He's He tries to push arguments out of me. And it's all because he's feeling like shit about himself. And so he wants the rest of the world to validate that feeling. Good old mum knows better now. And she never validates that feeling. And she just leans into it and reminds him, hey, I love you and I'm here when you're ready to talk. That's it. I'm not going to get cranky at you. I, and I think what you're saying there, Coxie, um, is really uh, poignant. I don't know. I think a lot of us just don't know how to express what we're feeling. 
Absolutely. We've, we've not been taught or not developed the skills um, in how to actually share that emotion without just spraying it at people mm. and and causing a whole lot of collateral damage. Um, and look, I've done a lot of work around this myself personally over the years and, and you know, part of my role as a coach and a mentor has been to actually develop my own self-awareness and reflection and self-mastery around all this stuff. Um, and I found it really tough in the last, uh, you know, not quite two weeks since my father passed away to even be able to articulate what's going on for me to those around me that are wanting and needing to support me and that's probably been one of the toughest things for me is how do I actually explain what the fuck is going on because I don't even know and that's the point I'd like to make often you don't know you don't know I can reference to a point three weeks ago I remember telling you I've got an elephant sitting on my chest I've got no fucking idea why it's sitting there and it can quietly piss right off I've had enough of it I still don't know what was wrong. I still have no idea why I was feeling so stressed and and yucky. And and often we don't because we don't have the skills, no matter how developed we are, no matter how much work we've done on ourselves, no matter how much assistance we've had to learn what these feelings might mean. Sometimes we don't. Sometimes there is no real tangible explanation. We're just feeling. And I can't explain that. I can't tell you anything more than there's an elephant on my chest. Just like you can't tell me anything more than you're really tired. I get it. I've been on your journey many times. And so therefore I can recognize that. I don't need you to tell me. And I think that if in relationships we can be more trusting of those around us so that we can share the tiny bits we might be able to share, and it may simply be, I don't know, I just feel irritable or I just feel out of sorts or I, I'm i feeling strange. Any of those things are enough to share. For the, If you trust the people that you're sharing them with, they will then have more understanding about where you're at. And that's, that's often, I think, a misconception about sharing feelings and emotions is that we need to be able to say, hi, I'm feeling some unresolved feelings of guilt and shame around my relationship with my father and because of that, I'm blah, blah, blah. It's like, no, that's ridiculous to, to think that we should all be able to articulate it so eloquently. Um, it can just be as simple as, I don't know why, but I'm feeling like shit and I'm fucking angry. That's more and, than sufficient. <laughs> and And from there, I feel like that can open up a conversation with a support person, whether that's a partner or a parent or a mate or whoever it is, it's something. Mm. It's something. And we talk about this a lot with our, our clients and our members, you know. You don't have to implement the perfect business plan in your first quarter in the drawing board. You've just got to start changing something. Mm. Just Just do your invoicing faster or... Just start using a calendar a little bit. Like it's just got to be a start mm. and, and that can then become the catalyst for more work and more work and more work that then, you know, you can look back in 12 months and go, holy shit, how look where we came from. Do you remember when we still used a paper diary? And now look at us. We've got job management systems and, you know, electronic bookkeeping and dispatch and, you know, stock control programs and all this stuff. It's like, Wow. And I think it's the same with our feelings and emotions. It starts with, uh, hey, I'm really fucking angry right now. And I don't know why. It's like, oh, what's going on in your life? Well, my dad passed away a couple couple weeks ago, but you know, I don't know. We weren't that close and I knew it was coming. It's like, yeah, I don't have a chat about that, was. <laughs> I think you just highlighted my next point perfectly. The importance of being that uh, support person or, or the person of trust. And what an uh, amazing role you're blessed to have in that person's life. So as I've referenced with my son, he doesn't yet know that he's feeling feelings about anything, but he trusts me enough to share with me the little bit that he can. And in this case, all he can is that he's angry. So I can recognize that my job is the support person because he trusts me and I feel really amazing that he trusts me is to help him with that. Now, mm. you might not know how to help and it's okay not to know how to help because sometimes I don't know how to help. I've got plenty of people in my life I actually don't know how to help, but what I can do is I can hear. I can actually mm. hear what they have to say. Now, my job isn't to fix it. 
It's often just to hear. Mm. So I'd like to encourage those that are listening to this podcast and they think, you know what, I think that person was trying to tell me something or I've had some conversations like that. Your role is to hear. It's to give them the time they need to express what is they need to express, whether it be big or little. You don't have to have the solution. You just need to be the ear that they're looking for. Yeah, being heard. People want to be heard. We all um, want to be heard. I chucked a little video up in the trade desk group um, through the week, and 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 I don't want to make this just about my my father, but one of the big things that stands out for me is that I never felt heard as his as his eldest son. He did lots of talking, lots of lecturing, lots of talking, lots of telling, but not a lot of listening. Um, and it's such a big thing with our our relationships um, is that we try and, I think, talk people better. <laughs> you know, it's like, let's talk about it. And then we talk at the people that we're trying to help instead of just saying, I'm going to sit here and shut the fuck up and just, just, you know, maybe a couple of well-placed questions to prod the other person to get them to start to open up a little bit. But, you know, there's no expectation, there's no time frame. Um, and again, it doesn't have to be massive, but just to actually listen, mm. and to listen people better, not to talk them better. I want to um, finish my bit of this at least with another point. If you are that support person and it's hard for you to listen, it's okay to share that as well. I mean, obviously, you're being privy to some pretty serious information. Perhaps you don't share that, but you can share that you're struggling with somebody else or you can share that uh, you've stepped up to play a role or you've heard through a conversation and that's actually quite a big thing for you to carry at the moment or you don't know how to help them. Can you help me figure out how to help them? Or I don't know what questions to ask. Can you help me find the questions to ask? Because I feel that often... I support people and we all play this role in our lives. We are all support people at times and those people are really well acknowledged. So I, first of all, I would say support people are what can be the crucial um, step, I suppose, or the, or the crucial answer for others to then be able to continue to share. But if you don't know what those questions are or you're uncomfortable in some of the conversations you've had, you can then gain support yourself. You're not alone in that journey either. Um, I, I think that we have a lot of conversations around, are you okay, all of this stuff, but we never then think about, okay, well, if we manage to have some of those crucial conversations with people, that may actually have an impact on the support person because they then don't know how to feel about that or they feel a burden of having to fix or support or find a solution for for somebody rather than understanding you know what this is actually just part of relationships these this this ebb and flow of information the sharing of information um does not have to be arduous or or big for the person it's being shared to i'm not sure if i'm really making a lot of sense in the way i'm trying to put that together sorry <laughs> you're, you're expressing your feelings in the best way you know how nicole thanks sorry <laughs> So, I don't know, Coxie, I just, um, I think there's a lot of us that are confused about what it means to have emotions and particular kinds of emotions. You know, men are taught not to be angry, that we shouldn't be angry, and anger's bad and toxic and evil and, and all this other stuff. And from my own personal perspective, and that's really all I can give right now, I think that is one of the most damaging um, crocs of shit that that our modern society has decided upon. Um, there's appropriate ways to express anger. There's appropriate places and forums. Um, and it's ironic that we see so much hate online and yet the flip side is that you know, men shouldn't be angry and shouldn't lash out to protect their families and their businesses and what they've worked so fucking hard for. Um, and that that's wrong. And I, I just, I think we've gotten a bit off track as I just have. Uh, <laughs> but 
Anger is just another emotion. It's healthy. It needs to be expressed. You know, you ask, ask any psychologist or counselor and they'll tell you that anger is an important emotion to be expressed so long as it's done in a way that's, you know, appropriate, as Correct. is sadness and happiness and yeah. every other emotion in the spectrum. But, you know, keeping any of these inside is, is just, it's shit. So we shouldn't do it. There you go. No. Problem solved. Nope. It'll come out one way or the other. So you can choose to be in control of how that comes out or you can find yeah. a way for it to come out and I promise it's not going to be pleasant. Yeah, you've said it perfectly, Coxie. As always. So <laughs> if you'd like to hear Coxie continue to be perfect some more. <laughs> if only that were true. You can find her and an increasing level of me again um, <laughs> at... Tradies in business. Uh, Facebook is probably where it's at. Got to love a bit of social media for good. That's what we're trying to do: is uh, make social media a good thing. Uh, so we've we've got uh, the page. There's an awesome group which is still growing. Tradies in business. If you go to the groups and search that, and uh, yeah, go and check out the ways you can actually. Get into a safe space, you know, a small group of trade business owners all dealing with the same shit that you are, feeling the anger, the frustration, the hurt, the fear, the confusion, and all the others, um, and actually sharing that with a small group of trusted colleagues. Uh, that's a big part of what Coxie and I have done. Um, it's called the Drawing Board. Check it out. Um, we're really proud of it, and we're even more proud of the members in the mm. drawing board and um, the amazing changes they're making. So, um, yeah, go uh, go have a look at that. And uh, thanks to everybody who's supported me in the last couple of weeks and uh, I'm doing okay. So thanks to everybody. Thank you for listening. You've been listening to the Tradies and Business Podcast with Warwick Bidwell and Nicole Cox. Find out more about today's guest, tools for your trade business and other cool stuff at tradiesandbusiness.com.au.